Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the third and the fourth problem of today's weekly contest. Find the count of monotonic pairs 2 and find the count of monotonic pair 1. Both the problems are exactly equal. The only difference lies in the constraint. The constraint for the second problem is, uh, th third problem is uh, on the smaller side and uh, the constraint for the last problem is a bit higher. So we'll be starting from the very brute force solution and optimizing it step by step. If you haven't given this problem a try, you should pause and at least give it a shot because you have solved these kind of problems multiple times in this channel. So with that, let's get started. The problem states that you are given an array of positive integers nums of length n. We call a pair of non-negative integer array, array 1, array 2, monotonic if their lengths are both n. Array 1 is monotonically non-decreasing, Array 2 is monotonically non-increasing and Array 1 of i plus Array 2 of i should be equal to nums of i for all the i's. Your job is to count the monotonic pairs and since the answer can be large, you have to return it modulus 10 power n plus 7. So let's take an example, let's say nums is 2, 3, 2. You need to find out how many monotonic pairs exist for this particular array. So there are four possible monotonic pairs as shown here. Each of those pairs satisfy all the criteria and there is no other pair which can satisfy all the criteria and hence there are and hence the answer is four because there are just four of these. So let's see the first one. Here it satisfies the first criteria because the first criteria says that array 1 should be monotonically non-decreasing. In other words, the array should be increasing. So you can see the array is indeed increasing. Similarly, second criteria says that array 2 is monotonically non-increasing. In other words, it should be decreasing array. So here you can see it is actually a decreasing array. Finally, array 1 plus i, array 1 of i plus array 2 of i should be equal to nums of i. You can see 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So because it satisfies all the criteria, this is a valid pair and there are 4 of those. So answer here is 4. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now what's the very brute manner to solve this? The very brute force way would be, okay, I will try out every possible pair of arrays. For each pair, I will see whether it satisfies the given criteria or not. If it satisfies the criteria, I will count that in my answer, otherwise I will not. So if you try that out yourself, basically you are trying to enumerate all possible pair of array. And then after enumerating all of those, you are checking the condition. So checking the condition you can do in order in time, right? You can simply iterate over the entire array and check all these conditions. Now the thing is how to enumerate all possible pairs. So how many first, how many different ways are there to get the first array? What would be the value here? The value here would be anything between 0 and 2. Similarly, value here would be anything between 0 and 4. Value here could be anything between 0 and 7 and so on and so forth. So let's assume that all of these values are x for now. So for each element, you can have anything between zero and X, right? So you have total X choices to fill each of these boxes and there are N of these boxes. So overall you will have X power N different ways to fill all the boxes. So you have X power N different first array and similarly you will have X power N different secondary. And for each pair, if you try out, you will take order in time. So overall complexity is x power 2n multiplied by n, which surely will not pass because the value of x itself is very huge. It is 2000 in both the problem, second and third. So this will not pass and we need to come up with something better. Now, obviously the biggest part here is x power 2n, which means you can't even iterate over all possible pairs and without iterating you need to figure out the answer and the usual way there is you try to come up with a recursive solution memoize it and that's how you can reduce your state 
so we'll not go deep into that part let's try to come back here so let's focus on the first element right what will be the value of the first element the value of that element should be less than equals uh, greater than equals to the previous element so basically this value should be greater than equals to whatever existed before similarly value here would be less than equals to whatever existed before so because it is the very first element there is nothing before so you can assume that it is zero similarly this is the very first element so there is nothing before you can assume that it is infinity now y is zero because the array is anyways positive so you, you can assume minus infinity as well but because the array is positive zero is sufficient now what are the values that you can fill here you can fill either zero or one or two because all of them satisfy this particular inequality similarly what are the values you can fill here again you can fill either zero or one or two because all of those satisfy this particular inequality now let's assume that you fill one of those let's say you fill one here and you fill two here uh you fill one here now because you filled one here you are bound to fill one here because array one of zero plus array two of zero should be equal to nums of zero as per the third criteria right so because this condition needs to be satisfied if the value is one here it should also be one now what you are saying you are saying that okay now my entire problem is reduced to give me the number of ways in which i can fill this entire remaining array given that the first element should be greater than equals to one in the first array and the first element should be less than equals to one in the second array isn't this problem exactly equal to the original problem you solved the original problem was okay there are i need to find out how many ways are there to fill this remaining like all these boxes such that the value of first element should be greater than equals to zero and the value of the first element in second array should be less than equals to infinity and now you are saying that okay i have fixed one of those value let's say 0 2 or 1 1 or anything and i'm saying that okay give me the number of ways to fill the remaining element such that the value of the first element in the first array should be greater than equals to 0 value of the second first element in the second array should be less than equals to 2 so hope you can see the regression here let's uh, try to formalize this a bit we let's say you are filling this particular array right so what you are saying is okay i need to fill all these four boxes so the current boxes lies here i need to fill all these four boxes and it is given that i have some element here let's call it p1 and some element here let's call it p2 so i need to find out how many ways are there in which i can fill this remaining array with these two constraints and what are the possible ways to fill the first element again for the first element you have only 0 to 7 you can fill anything between 0 to 7 so you can try with something that is greater than equals to the previous element so you can start with p1 right and if you pick p1 here the next element should definitely be 7 minus p1 again assuming that this is greater than this is less than equals to p2 this is a valid choice so now you are saying that okay i filled some x here and 7 minus x here now tell me what are the number of ways to fill the rest of the element such that the previous element or the first element should be greater than equals to x in the first array and first element should be less than equals to 7 minus x in the second array so you can call the exact same function for calculating this value now what are the other choices other choices are okay i fill something else i fill p1 plus 1 here assume so in that case you will fill 7 minus p1 minus 1 or in other words 6 minus p1 right now you are saying and again assuming that 6 minus p1 satisfies this p2 criteria as well you are saying that okay given i fill p1 plus 1 in the first 
first element i want number of ways to fill the remaining places such that the first element should be greater than equals to the p1 plus 1 and second element should be less than equals to 6 minus p1 so you can get the same the thing from the exact same function right and similarly you can try out all other possibilities of uh, the first element here and second element you will get similar kind of problems you can call the you can keep calling same function with the reduced array so previously you had this 759 now you will call the same function with 59 and whatever is exist before after that so if you do this let's say you got x1 as a result of this f you get x2 as a result of this f you get x3 as a result of this f and you get x4 as a result of this x and so on and so forth so the final answer for this f would simply be the sum of all these xi's and that you will return as an answer for this particular function so hope you can visualize the equation a bit better now now how to actually write the pseudo code so you do you need to keep the entire array with you the answer is no because you know that at any given point of time you are only dealing with a suffix of the original array so because you are dealing with suffix of the original array it's enough to just maintain what is the index after which you are considering all the array so you basically you will start with index 3 here right because you are saying that everything i need, I need to fill everything after index 3 and when you are calling something for the below elements you will pass on index 4 because now there you are saying that i need to fill everything after index 4 similarly for this one you will call index 4 for this one you will call index 4 and for this one you will call index 4 as well so basically instead of keeping for like forwarding the entire state into the function you are simply maintaining an integer to reduce your space and what to maintain so how would the pseudo code look like the pseudo code for this would look something like this uh, what you are doing is you are maintaining three things the index which denotes that okay after which index i need to fill all the positions previous one which says that what should be the value like what should be the minimum value of the first element of the first array previous two which denotes that what's the maximum value for the first element of the second array and inside this you will do very straightforward things like uh, if you have exhausted the entire array in other words if you have filled everything and you are asking that okay how many ways are there to fill this part of the array there is just one way which is basically nothing you whatever you have filled is correct so you just simply return one in this scenario otherwise we will come to this memorization part a bit later but uh, otherwise what you will do you will try out every possible way to fill this particular value and this particular value once you have filled these two value you will call the same function for filling the remaining part of the array based on what you have filled here so we will start with prev1 and go all the way up to array index because the minimum value here could be prev1 now based on i1 you can easily figure out what i2 would be because i2 would simply be array index minus i1 now after that you can simply figure out whether this satisfy the condition or not if it doesn't you will continue to the next element otherwise you know that you found a valid pair of integers that satisfy these two criteria so i1 and i2 you will call the function saying that okay give me the number of ways in which the first element should be greater than equals to i2 in the first array and less than equals to i2 in the second array so that you can call the same function for and get the answer you will simply keep them summing up and finally return that as your answer now it may happen that you are computing the same state again and again and in those scenario if you simply memorize it you will avoid computing those things again and again right so you can simply check if this is something you have previously computed if it is you will return whatever you have computed because after every computation you are saving that as well so what is the overall time complexity of this entire approach 
the time of the day is number of states multiplied by what you are doing inside each of the state because each state will be computed exactly once because of memorization so first let's figure out what you are doing inside each of the state so you are doing some mathematical operation here so that's order one then you are doing a for loop here right which basically is iterating from previous one to array index which in other words you can say it can take order x time x is the maximum value of the element so you are doing order x operation inside each of the state now how many states are there number of states is equals to number of different ways to call this function so number of different values of index could be n anything between 0 and n number of distinct values of pre1 could be x because you can fill anything in the previous value similarly number of previous value number of different values of pre2 will also be x so overall the number of different state here is n x square so overall complexity of your approach is n x cube which will not pass again both the second third and the fourth problem because the value of x um value of x is 50 and the value of n is 2000 so it is 2000 and it will be 50 cube so that is not sufficient but 50 square is sufficient so if we can somehow reduce one of the x from here that could be sufficient there as well now what's the easiest thing that you can remove which of the x you can remove easily the answer is you can remove either this x or one of these x right so if you remove this x what does it mean it means that you are not trying out all possibilities for the current index so removing this x could be harder can you remove one of these x again if you remove one of these x it means that you are now changing what you are carrying forward so that could also be harder but if something can be derived from the other then it could be easier the state logically would remain same but uh, uh, while computing the distinct states it would reduce so i would strongly encourage you to pause and try to see if you can remove one of these pref1 and pref2 by yourself so hope you thought about it the answer is you can derive pref1 from pref2 and vice versa why because let's say you pick i1 here right and you are saying that okay I, I need to find out number of ways in which i can fill this entire remaining array such that the first element should be greater than or equal to i1 and in the first array and first element in the second array should be less than or equal to i2 now do you really need both i1 and i2 the answer is no because if you have i1 you know that i2 would simply be whatever was the value here minus i1 because if you are able to put i1 and i2 here it indirectly mean that you are able to satisfy all the criteria, which in turn will say that you are satisfied this criteria as well which basically says that if it is i1 it would be 7 minus i1 or whatever the value here is so in other words you don't really need i2 you can simply drop i2 and you can still be able to achieve this exact same thing because the i2 is something you can compute with help of i1 itself so you don't need to pass i2 separately and hence this i2 will not be part of your dp state as well so number of states will reduced but the entire thing will still remain same because priv2 is something you can compute directly here so the pseudo code for this would look something like this instead of maintaining priv2 as an explicit state you are saying that okay i can derive priv2 based on priv1 itself so i don't really need to pass in preview priv2 explicitly so the entire solution will still remain the same except you now have n multiplied by x different states and inside each of the state you are doing you are still doing order x operation so overall complexity is now reduced to order n x square which is sufficient to pass the second th pass the third problem at least because third problem says that value of n is uh, 2000 and value of x is 50 so nx square is sufficient 